this green train, what we'll attempt to do is make a transition from the unsustainable oil-based economy that we're now in to a more sustainable sun-based economy that hopefully will occur in the very near future. Uh, there'll be many stops along the way, and your comments will determine where we stop and how long we stay there. So, I'll need your feedback to make this a valuable learning experience. So please don't be shy. Most people agree we need to go green, but how? We all want to connect with the sun, but practical solar applications are large and expensive. So how do we get started? Okay, something I want to show you right now uh, is this uh, tiny eight square foot demonstration MTD collector. It's uh, two foot by four foot, so that's eight square feet. Now this uh, little demonstration collector uh, can harvest between one and two million BTUs per year. Now that might sound like a lot, but it's not really. Uh, that's the fuel oil equivalent uh, somewhere between uh, uh, 20 and 40 uh, gallons of fuel oil per year. Uh, now, at $4 a square foot, it could pay for itself in one year. But of course, a small system costs more than a large system. So, an 800 square foot system could actually pay for itself in one year. But this little 8 square foot uh, collector, along with all the other apparatuses that uh, go with the system, uh, could easily take 10 years to pay for itself. Uh, but we have to start someplace. So let's be patient and gain some hands-on experience with some simple, low-cost experimental projects first. The old saying, a house is only as good as its foundation, is very true. As so, let's build a foundation first with some ha solid hands-on experience before we cover our roofs with do-it-yourself solar collectors. Okay, uh, this is a hot box. Uh, now, this is uh, made from uh, thermopane. It's a one foot by two foot section, so it just fits in a frame like this. And then, of course, you're going to need a cover to, to hold it in place. And then you put it out in the sun, and uh, you can measure the, how hot the absorber plate gets. That's all a hot box is. That's the basic idea. Uh, but it doesn't have to be this big uh, to collect valuable information. And I, I don't expect you to build something that fancy. Uh, now, here's a smaller one. This is made uh, with one square foot of uh, fiberglass reinforced plastic, and inside it has an al aluminum absorber plate paint black, and it also has an access hole where you can put your thermometer. Uh, so this is another type of hot box that you can build. But uh, even this, it's larger than it has to be. So uh, the hot box that we'll be building today is really much uh, simpler than this. And we'll actually uh, could be building a couple of hot boxes. Uh, it, it's up to you. Uh, you can use this basic concept and vary the glazing materials, the absorber plate materials, the insulation, and so on, and do your experiments and uh, discover for yourself what materials and what methods work best before you get in large, involved with a large project. Uh, that's basically what I, I'd like to help you do so you can get in started. In 1767, a Swiss naturalist by the name of Horace de Saussure explored the greenhouse concept and invented something known as the hot box. He used sunlight to raise the interior temperature of an insulated glazed box 18 degrees Fahrenheit above the boiling point of water, and his discovery led to the development of solar collectors. For this reason, so 
Horace de Saussure is often honored as the father of the solar collector industry. Hey, uh, for your very first solar heating project, what I'd like you to do is build a classic hot box. And it doesn't have to be too fancy. Uh, and we can make it out of cardboard. If you want to make it out of wood, you can do that also. But if you have a cardboard box, just cut the corners off like this. And we can build the frame for our hot box. This is just an old priority mailbox. So take some tape, put a little tape in each corner like this. Okay. Just like that, flip it over, hold up our corners like this. Okay, this is our the frame for a very simple hot box that we can use to experiment with. Okay, now that we have our frame, we can assemble the rest of our hot box. Uh, one of the first things we're going to need is some insulation because the uh, heat that we collect, we don't want to lose it uh, as fast as we collect it. So we're going to put a little insulation in the back. Uh, this isn't much. This is only half inch isocyanurate has an R factor of about 3.5. In a real collector you might use one inch of uh, isocyanurate. It's a very good high temperature insulation, not too expensive. Uh, now if you don't have this, uh, it's okay, you don't have to run to the store and buy isocyanurate. Uh, you can just use multiple layers of cardboard as an insulation. But uh, we do have it, so... Alright, so you just put your insulation in here. Uh, Alright, so we have our frame, we have our insulation. Next thing we're going to need is our absorber plate. This is what changes the light into heat. Uh, you notice I put a little notch in here. Uh, that's so we can insert our uh, temperature probe in that little notch to measure the temperature. Okay, <laughs> Jiminy Cricket. Okay, so we put that in next. Alright, now we need something to hold the uh, absorber plate in place. Okay, uh, and that's what this, this is another little frame. And you just put that on top of your absorber plate. You might want to cut a little notch in the wood uh, just to make it so it fits nicely. And then we're going to place uh, a glazing material. Now the glazing material, what this does is this this keeps the heat in. This is, um, this is what enables the greenhouse effect. So uh, the visible light comes through the glazing material, it hits the absorber plate, it's turned into a long wavelengths, and that's reflected back in. It's just a way of, of trapping heat. Okay, and then last but not least, uh, we're going to be putting uh, a little finish frame on top of our glazing material like this. I'll let you figure out how to do this. This, this isn't too hard. So uh, we'll just put a little frame on top of this uh, to hold the glazing material in place. There Your we go. Frame is all ready for the glazing. So uh, as a matter of fact, we've already put the glazing in. Then we just put some trim over the glazing to hold it in place. So this is our basic glazing frame for a hot box. Uh, and you remember the frame that we'll be using for a hot box is just a uh, it's just a box in this case it's made uh, it, it's made from a postal box so we have the insulation in the bottom now we're going to be measuring temperature so I've inserted a, a temperature probe you'll be using a digital temperature probe but I'll be taking uh, readings with a data logger so uh, this is the probe that I'll be using anyway you can see we have a little notch here and that's the notch uh, just holds the probe in place so we get a good heat transfer uh, so we can uh, tell what the temperature 
is uh, inside our hot box. That's all. Uh, so in this case, of course, we're using uh, an aluminum absorber plate. Um, but we're going to be comparing this aluminum absorber plate to uh, polyester felt uh, absorber material. Anyway, uh, so this one is finished. This is the one with the aluminum absorber plate. We have plate. our hot box with the al aluminum absorber plate. Uh, now, what we want to do is compare that to a hot box with a polyester felt absorber plate. This is black polyester felt. So we put our temperature probe in here over the insulation, place our felt pad on top. Now, we're going to put some water on this because in an actual collector, uh, this will be used for a trickle down type collector, uh, water will run through the polyester felt. So, um, anyway, after we saturate this with water, we'll place our inner film on top, and the inner film will be used to hold, uh, to prevent the water from condensing on the glazing and keep the heat in. And then uh, we'll place uh, a lid on top of this uh, for our uh, top uh, glazing material. Okay, so this is our polyester felt hot box. Uh, now we're going to do, be doing one other test also, and we'll be using polyester felt just like this directly with no glazing. And we'll, we'll put a temperature probe in here just to see how the temperature changes with this. Uh, so this will be saturated with water also. Uh, and we want to see uh, how all three of these uh, collectors not collectors, these are hot boxes. <laughs> we want to see how the temperature varies in all three hot boxes, and we'll be comparing this with the all ambient. We now is a test fixture for our polyester felt and our other uh, two hot boxes. Uh, so this is a simple one. This is for our polyester felt, just a piece of polyester felt over some insulation. So we'll put this in our first slot like this, just press it in like that put our probe in. Didn't even need a slot in this one. <laughs> okay, so uh, that's our first, this is the, the, just a straight polyester felt, and this will be exposed to the elements. The next one, uh, this is our hot box with the aluminum absorber plate. We'll put this in slot number two. And last but not least, we have our hot box uh, with the uh, polyester felt enclosed inside a uh, another um, inner film. Remember to hold the heat in. Okay. Anyway, this is our three. <laughs> well, all I have to do is figure out how to push it in here. Okay. Very good. So this is our mounting fixture, uh, and then we'll attach this to the side of the house and we'll take temperature readings a little later. Okay, all ready to go.